Okay, this is a introductory video to the Raspberry Pi startup sequence uh, that accompanies the article in Model Railroad Hobbyist. I'm Jeff Bunza, and we're going to just step through what the actual sequence of events is to get everybody familiar. So when you power on the Raspberry Pi, you'll get this screen. I used a 10-inch display to, to put this together. And uh, it's just going to go through the paces. We're going to see exactly what comes up. There's the background screen. There's the icons on the screen, much like any other Windows machine. It automatically starts up JMRI for you. And it looks to see what is connected to the Raspberry Pi. In this case, nothing. The uh, screen with all the green letters in the background uh, is the system console, and it gives you all the messages about what's going on. You have the uh, end of it is starting up the uh, Wi-Fi uh, throttle server, which corresponds to that screen I'm manipulating now. And notice it, it tells you what the active profile is. It's the Digitrack simulator, because there's nothing plugged into uh, the uh, JMRI at this point. But you can go through all of the uh, setup. You can uh, configure things. You can go through the tools and roster and set those up. Uh, create whatever tables you want to create. And then eventually quit out of it. To start it up, you double-click on the JMRI uh, Panel Pro. It'll go through the startup sequence. It'll list the last configuration that it ran, which in this case was the Digitrack simulator. In a couple of seconds, it'll automatically start up. And there goes the simulator with the windows we saw before in the same sequence we saw before. And the end result is it automatically starts up the Wi-Fi server. And you can see the configuration for that in the top window. Let's quit out of that now. Show you some other things. You can go up to the top menu bar. Notice there's a little black window there. This will give you a text input, and you can put in different commands to configure things, to move files around in uh, your RPI. Very useful. A couple of them are mentioned in the article. Also provided an Arduino IDE already preloaded on the Raspberry Pi, and here you can actually do Arduino development uh, and then download an Arduino from your Raspberry Pi. So if you're using the or any Arduino, you can uh, go and configure it, set it up, reconfigure it, program it, and things like that. If you look at what's loaded already for you, there are many sketches from my previous articles in Model Railroad Hobbyist that are there. So if you're looking for any of those, they're already there on the system. If you don't use them, you can go through and you can delete them later. So you've got things like the DCC++, uh, JMRI sensor interface channels, uh, and lots of other things from the articles. Now let's quit out of that. And we'll go back up to the little raspberry right in the corner there and go down to Preferences. You can also use that to shut down the machine. We'll go down to Preferences and the Raspberry Pi configuration. This is good to know about because you can do things like you can change the host name of the computer that the Raspberry Pi is referring to itself as. But more importantly, early on, you can change the screen resolution. If you're using a VGA screen or another screen that doesn't conform to what this is already set up for, you can go and change it. You can also enable and disable a whole series of interfaces on the Raspberry Pi as well. So that's a good thing to know about. And to shut down, you go to the menu, click Shutdown. The window will come up, and it has options for shutdown, reboot, and logout, and we're shutting down here. So let's go through it again, except this time I'm going to focus a little bit closer to the screen so that you can see a lot of the details that maybe you didn't see before. So you can see that the icons are bigger, and I'm actually only covering about a quarter of the screen. 
You'll see JMRI coming up automatically. There's nothing connected to it in terms of a DCC base station, so it goes and runs the simulator in exactly the same manner we saw before. Now you can see the, the uh, system console a little bit better and note that it winds up starting the Y throttle server. Okay, and it'll tell you what the configuration it's using, which you can also change. You can also run the Panel Pro Auto Identify right there and uh, see uh, it will go through and try to identify any base station connected to it. Here we're going back to the preferences again. So you can change the Raspberry Pi configuration, screen resolution, the name of the computer, the interfaces, a uh, whole bunch of things. You probably won't change those right away, but they're good to know about. But certainly, if you were, have a different screen that you're going to use, knowing how to change the screen resolution is a good thing. And here's the interface selection. Let's get out of that. And we'll start up JMRI again. Just to show you what's there, notice it's selecting the Digitrack simulator again. Of course, we have nothing connected to it. And it starts that up in the same pattern we saw before. So you can get a pretty good idea of what it's uh, going through in the startup sequence so you don't get surprised. And uh, you can always quit out of it, restart it. And now I think we'll go and shut the uh, unit down, turn off the RPI by hitting shutdown. You can see that a little bit better. And then we'll end the session.